Hi, I love horror, do you? Welcome to Love Horror, podcast episode 5. Last time I looked at some interesting trivia from Friday the 13th movies, part 3 and 4. This time I'll be looking at horror video games that came out in 2014. Plus I'm going to cheat a little and also mention a HD remaster of a game that was released in January 2015. Okay, first off we have Alien Isolation. Alien Isolation is a first-person survival stealth horror game by the Creative Assembly and published by Sega. Which is actually quite interesting as the Creative Assembly is mostly known for their Total War series of video games. Which if you don't know, they are a mix of turn-based strategy and real-time tactics games. Set in the past such as Shogun Total War which was released in 2000 and set in the 15th to 17th century Japan. Isolation came out on both last-gen platforms such as Xbox 360, PS3 and Windows, but also current-gen Xbox One and PS4. To date it has sold over a million copies. Here's a little extract from the description on Wikipedia. The Creative Assembly described Alien Isolation as a survival horror game as opposed to an action shooter. Designing the game more in line with Ridley Scott's Alien as opposed to James Cameron's more action-oriented Aliens. Unlike most other video game adaptations of the Alien franchise, Alien Isolation features a single alien for most of the title's duration that cannot be killed, requiring the player to use stealth tactics in order to survive. Although the game features some weapons, they will be lethal only against human occupants and android working Joes. The player can also finish the game by not killing any humans using non-lethal methods. Instead of following a predetermined path, the artificial intelligence, AI, of the alien has been programmed to actively hunt the player by sight, sound and smell. The alien AI was programmed with a complex set of behavioural designs that unlock as it encounters the player, creating an illusion that the alien learns from each encounter with the player and apparently adjusts its hunting strategy. It sounds like a very intriguing game. I haven't played this particular game yet, but I have played some of the older titles such as Aliens vs Predator and Alien vs Predator 2. If Isolation is ain't like these other titles, they are very atmospheric games set in the pitch black darkness with a bleeping noise on the radar as enemies slowly get closer. So it definitely sounds like a game worth checking out. Next we have The Walking Dead Seasons 1 and 2. No, not the TV series, the game series. They are the games based not on the TV series but on the comics. You play, however, new characters created for the game. They were released as five episodes and then a sixth episode to bridge the gap in in between the two seasons. Then season 2 was released with a further 5 episodes, so instead of buying a full game for say 30 to £60, pounds, you can buy the individual episodes for just a few pounds or dollars. Which is something that Telltale Games is known for doing, they have released episodic games of Sam and Max, Back to the Future and even Jurassic Park. The game is mostly an adventure game, with multiple choices and your, and your saves even... Uh, carry on from each season so for example once you finish season one and you buy the first episode of season two you can import your save data so your previous choices can impact the game world in season two walking dead the game is available on a plethora of platforms such as 360 ps3 xbox one ps4 and pc plus some mobile devices like the iPad and also Android devices. Next, we have The Evil Within. The Evil Within, known in Japan as Psycho Break, is a new survival horror game that feels a lot like the older Resident Evil games. It was released on PC as well as last-gen and current-gen PlayStations and Xboxes. From the description on Wikipedia, 
The game is played from a third person perspective in which scavenging and for supplies and learning when to fight or run are key factors in surviving. Sebastian, the protagonist, needs to make use of the environment in order to survive. The game world can transform during scripted events as well as through resorts of player actions, altering locations and creating new paths. Sebastian must use medical items to restore health. Some of these items cause temporary hallucinogenic effects. By collecting vials of green fluid throughout the game, players can upgrade his abilities. The Evil Within got mostly positive reviews from the critics. It is quite a creepy game and well worth your time looking into, especially if you like the older Res Evil games. I've played this from start to finish and if you like the older Resident Evil games, such as Resident Evil 1, 2, Code Veronica, I think you'll really enjoy The Evil Within. Now, lastly, I'm going to be cheating here, as I mentioned at the beginning. This one is technically not a 2014 release, it's a 2015 release, at least here in Europe. Resident Evil Remake Remastered Originally released as an exclusive to the Nintendo GameCube in 2002, Resident Evil was a ground-up remake of the first Resident Evil game from 1996. In January 2015, a HD remaster was released of it for Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3, PS4 and PC, and it is the horror game that I am currently playing now. I really recommend it, it's great. It is exactly what you'd want from a remake. I have played the original from 1996 and I've even played this one actually when it first came out on GameCube. I've also played all, well, all the Resident Evils. I've played 2, 3, Veronica, the one on the ship that I've completely forgotten the name of off the top of my head and 4, 5 and some of the spin-offs. I've seen all of the live action movies and the two 3D movies. And this is exactly what you'd want from a remake of the original game. It feels as exactly like the same game. It's set in the same mansion, same storyline, but the graphics are completely remade and it just feels perfect remake. It really is a perfect remake. So if you re if you really like the Resident Evil games, or you've never played a Resident Evil game, I really recommend you check this out. It's a Resident Evil Remake Remastered. So next time we'll be looking at trivia again from Friday the 13th Films, this time from parts 5 and 6, so please come back next week. Also, as a reminder, you can find and subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. If you have any suggestions for the next episode or just this podcast in general, then you can email me at lovehorrorpodcast at yahoo.co.uk. That's lovehorrorpodcast, all one word without the question mark, lovehorrorpodcast at yahoo.co.uk. Thanks for tuning in.